The member for Riverton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tonight is a time for reflections, appreciations, and importantly, uh, learning some of the lessons of the past. Perhaps the most common personal questions I've been asked during my time in Parliament is how did a quirky, straight-talking person from the black, box, black blocks of Michigan get to be in the West Australian Parliament, the treasurer of the state, and the leader of the opposition? I usually answer a euphemistically good question and shrug my shoulders. Life acts and, and goes in mysterious ways. But the question is often prompted by the well, widely held perception that politicians, particularly mainstream pol party politicians, fit into a certain mold, mold which I did not. They usually come from safe seats, which are, at least in my party, allocated by power brokers by, through people who work through the system. I came into Parliament not by, via a safe seat, but a marginal seat. I won the seat of Riverton and, from Labor in 2008 with a margin of 64 votes. My path meant I came to the place on my own terms with no favors owing except to win the seat the next time. A freedom few on either side of this chamber enjoy. Why, the curious would then ask, did I decide to become a politician? The answer to this question is easier. Politics and government are vitally important, and I wanted to make a meaningful contribution to my adopted community. I wanted to serve, I wanted to be service to the community to which I feel I owe so much. Also, up to that date, I had spent a lifetime telling politicians what to do and how to do it, and thought it was time to mix metaphors, jump the fence, and get my hands dirty. I do not mean to imply that those who ask why do not understand the importance of good government. On the contrary, they understand it very well indeed. Underlying the question why is, in fact, a general loss of respect for the political process and in a bit of exasperation for the political class. I myself had similar sentiments when I was looking in from the outside. Having been on the inside for 12 years and become an insider, I believe our system generally produces good government. This I do aff affirm, even if the political and parliamentary process can be chaotic, long-winded, frustrating, opaque. As the Ger German leader Bismarck first warned, two things people should not watch being made if they wish to enjoy the outcome are sausages and politics. In my maiden speech, I proposed the elimination of the upper house. The Honorable Simon O'Brien from that other place, who had come to listen to my speech, when he heard it, almost fell off his chair. <laughs> and I could hear the screams from Norman Moore, the Honorable Norman Moore, from my seat. Well, I recant. A bicameral system with the upper house being a house of review and a check on the excesses of the executive is an important aspect of our system. As to the character of the political class, I, like everybody, I think, tried to do our bit by being the honest, accessible, hardworking local member and minister, and I hope I was successful. When I was first elected, the expectations of many was that I would not be a good fit in the role of a local member. I was a big picture person, a dry policy wonk, with no background in local activity other than my children's sports in schools. To be honest, even I had, I was uncertain of whether the shoes would fit. Happily, I've enjoyed being a local member immensely. Indeed, being a local member has been the highlight of my political career. The Riverton District fit me perfectly. It's one of the high, it has one of the highest proportions of migrants of any state in electorate in Australia. Most of its migrants are from Asia, communities with which I have had a long and personal relationship. The Riverton community is culturally diverse, inclusive, aspirational and value educational excellence like no other. It is family oriented and loves its sports. It's the heart and soul of our state. I've been, it's been a privilege indeed and honor to be the member for Riverton. To the people of Riverton, thank you. You trusted me to help you. You invited me into your families, shared your triumphs and sorrows, enriched my life and that of my family. I will cherish the trust and confidence you placed in me in time of your need and I hope I've been of service to you. Thank you. In the second term of the Barnett government, I was appointed to the ministry, finance and treasurer, energy and multicultural affairs. 
multicultural affairs portfolio was important and rewarding. It gave me the opportunity to help migrants do as I've done, adjust to and contribute to the new home of our new home of Western Australia. The Treasury and energy portfolios turned out to be the portfolios from hell. It was as if all those politicians I had lectured over the years in my past profession to avoid debt and deficits were getting payback. I became the treasurer a month before the release of the 2014-15 budget, and, that, and the state's revenue immediately tanked. I guess it's karma. Over the 2014-15 and 2015-16 years, virtually every source of state revenue declined, with overall revenue declining each year by three points down. This was the most significant reduction in revenue any Australian state had suffered since the Great Depression of, of 1930s. Royalties receipts led by iron ore collapsed by two billion per annum. Our GST share fell below 30%. The private sector also was feeling the pain. The state's domestic economy went into the deepest decline in 85 years. The late electricity sector was in a similar deep funk. Synergy was hemorrhaging. The Muja A and B power station rebuilt that I inherited was a disaster, and the Western power was required to spend over a billion dollars on new poles. As Voltaire said, each player must accept the cards life deals them, but once in hand, they must decide how to play the cards to win. Well, I played the hand as best I could, cut expenses, grow to the lowest in decades, raised some taxes, reformed and cut costs in the electricity sector, made the case for reform of GST, pushed the Commonwealth to assist with infrastructure spending, and I tried to sell assets, but I lost the hand. The, def the deficit and debt grew, the economy continued to struggle, and we lost the 2017 election. I did my best, and I arguably was the best place to play the hand. I would not. I would do it again, and I have no regrets. I then took on the role of opposition leader, not with this, any sense of future position, but out of the sense of duty to help rebuild and regroup a shattered team, and to help the WA parliamentary liberal team on the road to, for a return to government. My frustration was compounded when, the lead, when, as leader of the opposition, I watched the McGowan government not only receive the benefits of our work, but took credit for them and receive huge re revenue windfalls. Politics is a tough game, and victors write history. Any team of politicians is a rolling ball of personal ambition, egos, ideology, competing interests, and the team that I led as opposition leader were no different. I gave the role all I had, including my mustache. <laughs> and it hasn't grown back. <laughs> Undoubtedly, the highlight of my time as opposition leader was the three elections held. They were, we were always going to win Cottesloe, but we did better than predicted, and of course it resulted in the excellent new member of David Honey. Darling Range by-election was special. Against the odds, outspent on advertising by more than three to one, Written off in the polls and media, we won with a massive 9.3% swing, and again, it resulted in the return of one of the hardest working members in this house, Alyssa Hayden. The federal election was also a great win against the odds. The public of Western Australia are indisputably better informed and less persuaded by spend than governments and media give them credit for. I have been blessed with the assistance of many people during my political career. First and foremost is my wife, Nyok. She had her own career, but put in the hard yards for me, including hundreds of functions. One year, I think we, at least I, went to 17 Chinese New Year balls, <laughs> and the biggest achievement was I didn't put on weight. <laughs> I could not have done the job without her. My children have made me proud. They have succeeded immensely in their own careers and supported me in mine. No achievement can exceed the achievement of watching your children succeed. I would not have been in Parliament or become a minister without the support and leadership of Colin Barnett. He was, right, he was in the right place at the right time, and Western Australia is better for it. It goes without saying I would not be here without the Liberal Party. It pre-selected, supported, guided, 
advised and mobilized the community support for me. One of the most uplifting aspects of my journey in politics has been to see and participate in the great community event that is our elections. Win or lose, and I've experienced both, they illustrate the strength of our civil society and democracy. They are a great event. During my time in politics, the Liberal Party has had two excellent directors here in WA, Ben Morton and Sam Calabresi. Both men are wise and skilled in the process of politics beyond their years. Ben went on to become the member for Tangney, the federal seat that entirely encompasses the seat of Riverton. In this role, he has been a godsend, hardworking, supportive of the community. As to my colleagues, thanks for the memories. The highs, the lows, the thrills, the spills, the wins, the losses, planning and the scheming, the laughter and the pain. I would not have missed it for quids. Good luck. Remember, politics in the end is a battle of ideas, not personalities. To Anthony Spagnolo, the Liberal Party's candidate for Riverton, I say, earn it, and I trust you will. Godfrey Lowe and Michael Goddard have supported me from start to finish. I've had outstanding electorate staff, and I mean outstanding, including Lynn Mitchell, Ben Kunza, Tracy Kant, as well as ministerial staff, Simon Helm, Natasha Chung, and Luke O'Callaghan. Denise Rice and Andrew Gasper stood by me uh, in the many lonely days as opposition leader. I thank them all. A warning. I came into the public debate in the late 1980s, first as a public servant, and then as a, in the Institute of Public Affairs, amid in part because of W. Inc. Mach 1. Indeed, I am one of the few people in this place who remembers firsthand those times. Members opposite or too young to remember should read the reports of the Royal Commission into W. Inc. for their own advocation. I and the Liberal Party won in 2008 to a significant degree because of W. Inc. Mach 2. And now, as I prepare to leave Parliament, I see signs of a potential repeat. I recognize what I say may not make some squirm and cause others to write me off as a partisan sore loser, but it needs to be said, and few others than I can or will. The McGowan government is far too close to select powerful commercial, commercial interests, particularly in the media and the property sectors in the state. There is a reason why other states have banned political donations for property developers. Governments control planning and own vast tracts of valuable land, and property developers stand to gain mightily if they receive special treatment from either planning determinations or access to government land. Experience here and other states have shown that without adequate safeguards, some politicians and developers succumb to the lure of largesse and do deals to their collective advantage but to the great disadvantage of the community. In response to this experience of WA Inc., successive WA governments, labor and coalition, have put in place processes that greatly reduce the discretion of ministers over planning, tendering and land disposal decisions, and increase the level of transparency of these decisions. These safeguards, particularly more recently under the COVID-19, have been eroded. This is dangerous. I'm not advocating a ban on property developers, but enforcement of transparency and tendering guidelines. The fourth estate plays an essential role in our political system. It is one of the primary means by which the public are informed of the activities, performance, and capabilities of government opposition, governments and oppositions. To be effective, the media sector should be diverse, competitive, and independent of commercial interest. This is not the characteristics of the media in the state now. The traditional media is highly concentrated with one outlet having near monopoly on newspapers combined with the dominant free-to-air TV. This is not healthy. Channel 9 is starting to expand in the state, and I wish them well. The ABC, which is established to counter weaknesses in the commercial media market, has become very nationally or Eastern state centric. I urge the ABC hierarchy to put more resources into our state. One of the contributing factors of WA Inc. Mach 1 was the takeover of media outlets, TV and newspaper, by commercial interests, and then using these outlets to provide political leverage in pursuit of commercial gain. Read 
the Royal Commission. It is an important healthy characteristic for the Australian media landscape that most media outlets are independent in terms of ownership and operation of non-commercial interests. That's the general characteristic of our media, and it adds to its quality. In Western Australia, the dominant commercial media outlet has ownership links to a large range of commercial operations in the state. And these operations have many dealings with state and federal governments. This is not surprising, threatening, indeed is appropriate. The concern lies with the potential use of media outlets to advance non-media commercial interests. The solution lies not in special regulation or prohibitions, but strict enforcements, again, of transparency and tender guidelines. If we do not learn the lessons in the past, we are bound to repeat them. Mr. Speaker, I've said what I had needed to say. Now I move on. I leave this place with a sense of satisfaction knowing that at all times I did the best I could for the people of Riverton and, at, and of this state, that I worked hard for my constituents, then I remain true to my values. I wish all here well. Thank you.